All right, so in this project, we're gonna create an increment counter, and I'm sure you've seen this on websites somewhere. Basically, we have these numbers. I'm just using Twitter, YouTube, Facebook fans, uh, but this could be any number, and when we come to the site initially, you can see that it, go, it counts from zero up. And we can set the, whatever the increment is, we can set that to whatever we'd like to make it faster or slower. Um, so we're gonna first just create create it, style it, we're gonna make it responsive, so when it's on a small screen, you know, it goes vertical, and then we'll add the JavaScript to make it increment like this. All right, so let's get started. All right, let's get started on our increment counter. So I have my project starter, I also have a link to Font Awesome because we will be adding the social media icons, which of course is optional. And let's say increment counter and in the body here, we're going to have three divs with the class of counter dash container. Okay, so in this counter container, we're going to have the icon. So let's do an i tag. Now, when you use social media icons with Font Awesome, it's FAB class instead of FAS, and then FA dash, and this one's going to be Twitter. And I'm going to make it a little bigger with Font Awesome. You can also add the class of FA dash, let's do 3x, so three times the normal size. And then we're going to have a class of counter. And this is where the number is going to go. However, right now I'm just going to hard code it, but it's ultimately going to come from a, an attribute, a data attribute that we're going to call data target and we're gonna set that to 12,000. 12, you can set it to whatever you want. And then we're gonna have a span with just the text that this is the Twitter followers. Okay, and we're gonna have two more of these and you can have as many counters as you want. So the second one here is gonna be YouTube. And this, let's say, this will be 5,000. and the data target 5,000. And let's change Twitter followers to YouTube subscribers. And then this one down here, let's make this Facebook. And then for followers or fans, whatever, we'll do 7,500 and 7,500. We'll change this text here to Facebook fans. All right, so that's what it's gonna look like now. Let's go ahead and style this stuff. So the font I wanna use is Roboto Mono. So up here, let's say CSS, question mark, and then let's change, let's see, we'll get rid of this. So the family is gonna be Roboto plus Mono, like that. And then we'll change the font family here to Roboto Mono. Okay, gives it kind of that typewriter look. And then let's add a background color here. So background color is gonna be a purplish color, so 8E44AD. And we'll make the text white. Okay, and then let's see, we have Flex direction column, I'm gonna get rid of that. I actually want it to be, I want it to look like this, except on, you know, when it's on small screens, it'll go this way. So we'll just add a media query at the end. Um, so let's set a line item, that's good. All right, so the counter container, so counter dash container, I'm gonna display flex. And this I want to display as a column. Remember, the counter container is each one of these, which we're making a flex box, and we don't want it to go this way. We want them to be stacked on top of each other. So let's set the flex direction there to column. And let's justify content center. And let's add a margin. So just to add some spacing, we'll do 30 pixels top and bottom, 50 left and right. And then let's see for the counter class. Let's see, so counter. I'm going to set the font size. This is the, you know, the text 
that that's going to increment. I'm going to set that to 60 pixels. We're going to make that quite big. And then let's add a margin top of 10 pixels. And let's also align in the in the container here, counter container. Let's do a text align. Oops, text dash align to the center. Good. Now, when it's on small screens like this, I want it to go the other way. So let's create a media query here by saying at media and a max width of, let's say, 580. So meaning anything under 580 pixels, then I want the body flex direction to be a column instead of a row. All right. So there we go. Now we don't need to have these these hard coded numbers in here. We can get rid of these because that's going to be input by the JavaScript. So in the next video, we'll jump into our script JS and we'll continue with that. OK, so now we're going to make this function by having it count up to whatever this data target is and we want to put it in here. So basically the inner text of counter. So we have multiple counters. That means that we need to bring it in with query selector all. So let's say const counters set that to document dot query selector all all the classes of counter and that's going to give us a node list which is similar to an array. So we want to then loop through that with a for each for each takes in a function. So we'll say for each counter then let's first of all take the counter so that that specific element and let's set the inner text to zero and I'm going to set it to a string of zero. So now it's going to just show zero in, you know, inside of the div right here. So that's inner text will either you can either put something in there like we are now or you can get something from it with inner text. So I'm going to have a function in here called update counter and this is going to be an arrow function and then we want to get the target. So let's say const target, which is in the data target attribute. So we can take the counter and we can call dot get attribute and the attribute we want to get is going to be data dash target. Now this is going to be a string. In fact, I'll go ahead and console log and I'm going to use the type of operator and show you what data type target is also the value of target. OK, so if I go down here and I open up my console, actually nothing's going to show because we haven't called this. We want to call it. So outside of update counter, we'll call update counter and it's going to just call it once uh, and we're going to see the type, which is a string and then whatever the data target is. Now to change this to a number, which is what I want to do, um, because we're going to want to do some math on it. We could either wrap it in a number constructor, we could use parse int or we can just add a plus sign. So if we save that now you can see down here that turns it into a number. So let's get rid of this and let's create another variable called C and this is going to be whatever is in the inner text. We set it to zero here, but now we want to get it. So let's say counter dot inner text. And we want that to be a number as well. So I'm just going to add a plus sign here. And then we're going to create the increment. So we need to decide how how much do we want to increment this by and depending on that number, that'll depend on how fast or slow it is. So we want the target. Let's take the target and let's divide by and this could be anything you want. Um, if we divide it by if we just use target, it's just going to it's going to increment by itself. So 12,000, 5,000, and it'll just basically just flick right on the screen. We want it to count upwards. So I'm going to divide it by 200 and you can experiment with this if you want. Now I'm going to console log increment here. So the first one, remember, that is 1200 and that divided by 200 would be 60, 5000 by 225, 7500, 373, 37.5. So let's go ahead and add an if statement here. We want to make sure that that C number, um, we want to make sure that that is less than the target because we don't want to go past the target. 
So if it is, then let's take the counter and let's set the inner text. And I'm going to set that to a set of back ticks. And we want to take that C and we want to add whatever that increment is. Okay, but I also want to round this up. So let's let's do math dot seal. So math dot seal is going to round this number up. Okay. Now, if I save that, you can see we get 60, 25, 38, um, which I just saw on the console. Uh, it was 37.5, but we're rounding it up. Now we want this not to just stop on the first increment. We want it to keep going until, you know, until it, uh, it reaches this, this right here. So we need to keep calling update counter. Now, if we just call it like this, it's not going to work. It, I mean, it's going to go up, but it's not going to do that, um, you know, the count up the animation type effect. So what we want to do is just pass this in a set timeout. And we want to run it, let's say every uh, or not every, but we want to wait one millisecond before we run it. That way it waits that millisecond, which gives it time. And then it will go ahead and, you know, keep running and it's incrementing by, you know, 60. 25, 38, whatever it was. And if you want it to go slower, you could do you can make this a, a bigger number like a thousand and you can see that takes longer. If we do, let's say 10, very quick. So it, it's up to you on how fast you want to make this. I think 200 is good. And then I just want to put an else here. So else then let's just set the counter dot in our text. And we'll set it directly to whatever the target is, because we obviously we don't want it to go above these numbers which are in the target. And that's pretty much it. So obviously, if you wanted to change this, if you wanted to do, you know, 500,000 and save, it's going to it's even though this is this number is way higher than these, it's still going to take the same amount of time. It's not like these will finish first and then this is going to finish after because we took whatever the target is and we divided by a specific number. Okay. And then it's going to increment by that. So you can set these to absolutely anything. All right. So I hope that made sense. And uh, of course you could add this to your website, just a little widget and it doesn't have to be followers or it can be any number at all. And it's pretty easy to uh, to implement. So no jQuery or anything like that. Um, but that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's move on to the next project.